Hi, I'm John Fisher, Program Specialist at Sonoma County and Sonoma County Charter Selpas. And I'm Sherry Roberge, Data Specialist with the SELPA. We're here to provide some guidance on how to handle transition meetings for students with IEPs. Our audience is providers, including teachers, administrators, and data technicians. The goal is to provide a clear process for scheduling, holding, and completing transition meetings, as well as preparing parents and staff from the new school for a successful transition. So John, why do we hold transition meetings? The bottom line is we want to ensure that the student has a successful start at the new school. Secondly, it documents any changes in minutes, percentage in general ed, etc. So that is in place when the student begins at the new school. Also, Sherry, doesn't it affect reporting? Yes, it does. But let's go through the process of the transition meeting first, and then we'll talk about reporting. Great. First, let's provide some definition. A transition occurs when a student is moving to a new school or there's a significant change of environment at the next school year. There may need to be some changes to the IEP. In this presentation, we'll talk about the responsibilities of the sending school, which are many, and the receiving school, which are few, but are very important. It is really important that the sending school and the receiving school act in concert. So before we get started, it's important to note that an academic year runs from July 1 through June 30, regardless of your school's calendar. That being said, when a student is transitioning to a new school in the fall, they will technically start at that new school on July 1. So John, what are the steps in the process for the sending school? Find out who the receiving school is, then contact that school to determine who should be invited to the transition meeting. Schedule the meeting inviting relevant staff from both schools. This is a great opportunity for parents and student and the future school to get to know each other. Now let's talk about the meeting. First, depending on the timing, it can be an amendment meeting or if the annual plan review is due, combined with a plan review in the future IEP forms. If it is part of the plan review, check the transition box at the top of the information and eligibility form. Next, the team should review the present levels page. This is important for the new staff to ask questions and get a good picture of the student's strengths, preferences, and needs, as well as an opportunity to talk with parents to understand their input and concerns. Sherry, what about statewide assessments? It's necessary to review and possibly adjust the statewide assessments. Remember, students may or may not test depending on what their grade level will be. It's important this information is accurate for the TOMS report. If the student has testing accommodations and the student will not be tested before the next plan review, then these must be removed. If the student will be tested, be sure any accommodations and or designated supports are added. John, how about the support and services page? To complete this page, you'll have to get information from the receiving school. You'll need to know service minutes, if there are any changes in service location, provider type, etc. Also, ask for any changes in accommodations, modifications, and supports, as you can include these in the transition IEP. Sherry, what's the best way to handle this in SACE for reporting purposes? Let's take a look. Services for the current academic year will end on June 30. Service minutes for the new school will start on July 1. For reporting purposes, we only include the new offer of services. The service that just ended on June 30 was already reported to CalPADS from the last meeting. So this is the service that will be marked Do Not Report. Program accommodations, modifications, and supports can be updated the same way. You can edit these to end on June 30 and then start any new program accommodations as of July 1 through the end of the plan review cycle. John, 
What about the educational settings page? The educational settings page allows an IEP team to document a future change in the program setting or percentage of time in general education. So Sherry, how does this work? Don't make any changes to the current setting. Instead, scroll down to program setting for TKK or greater and then check the box next to, will the student's program setting change within the IEP year? Enter the future program setting and the percent in Gen Ed, which was provided by the receiving school. For transition meetings, the start date in the projection field should be within the first month of school of the next academic year. SAFE will provide a CalPADS alert on the receiving case manager's dashboard 30 days before that future start date. Finally, on the bottom of the Ed Settings page, there is a place to indicate the transition activities, which must be filled out whenever the student is transitioning to a different school or a different environment. So those are the responsibilities for the sending school. Now let's take a look at the responsibilities for the receiving school. Make time to attend the transition meeting. Provide any changes to the supports and services page, including accommodations, modifications, and supports. For services, indicate any future changes in services such as location, minutes, provider, etc. This is important if, for example, the sending school provides SAI in a pullout model and the receiving school uses a push-in model. Sherry, what about the Ed Settings page for the receiving school? The receiving school should provide the sending school with the program setting and the percent in Gen Ed and Special Ed based on their bell schedule. Remember, there's a spreadsheet in the SACE document library to help calculate this. In the fall, the receiving case manager will get an alert on the SACE dashboard to create an amendment for reporting purposes. Since this was discussed, documented, and agreed to at the transition meeting, an IEP meeting is not required for this amendment. It's being created solely for CalPATS reporting purposes. You don't even need to get a parent signature. Please watch our award-winning Ed Settings Amendment video for further information. That's a wrap. Toodaloo! <laughs>